Why doesn't the uh, place like this? Beast! Anyone up with that one? That's why we're here, right? What's up guys, Hello Bass, we're just gonna back here with another video. Thanks you for tuning in. I appreciate every one of you that tunes in to watch these videos. Today, I wanna share with you a bait that I almost never leave home of, whether it's spotted bass, largemouth, smallmouth, a soft plastic bait that's so versatile and pretty much underrated, but I never leave home without it. So, a super versatile soft plastic bait. You can use a ton of different ways. Um, I always have them in my boat. I always have a few rigged up, and I wanna show you my top five ways I rig this bait. Uh, so stay tuned to the end. Make sure you see all five. You might be surprised um, and learn a way to fish a bait that you already love um, or one you haven't tried yet, but you sure will want to add to your arsenal. The bait is the Strike King Menace Scrub. And what got me to thinking about doing this video is I've been kind of hitting some clearance racks lately. And uh, I got a lot of tackle, as you can see on my wall. And my boat's full of tackle. You've seen my videos. Um, so a lot of times when there's clearance, I'm only stocking up on the things that I know I'm absolutely going to use. Uh, and I'm grabbing all the natural color menace scrubs, the black and blues, uh, the greens that I can find because I know I'm going to use them. So let me tell you the five ways I rig these and, and walk you through a few tips and tricks that can help you boat a few more bass. So as far as color selection, I keep it pretty simple. Um, I like to have uh, some green pumpkin watermelon type colors, a little bit of fleck. Uh, my favorite is green pumpkin blue. Um, that's the one I use most often. I think they call it green pumpkin sapphire. I like to have the black blue fleck. Um, that's just good anytime I get low light situations, a little bit darker water. And then there's two other kind of specialty colors. One is a white that I like to use the back of uh, swim jig trailers and things like that, which we'll touch on. And then one sneaky color that I really like is this KBD Magic. And that is almost specifically a small mouth dedicated color. And we'll show you a little bit more on that coming up. All right, so now you know the bait, it's the Menace Scrub. You know what simple colors to get. Um, let's talk about how I rig it. Number one. So number one is just a simple Texas rig. So this is probably the most common way to rig just about any soft plastic. So the nice thing about this <clears throat> is it kind of resembles, uh, you can fish it basically like you would a worm or a small craw or a beaver. Um, it'll glide, it'll get down in there. I usually kind of fish this on a finesse, finesse Texas rig, anywhere from maybe an eighth to a three sixteenths. Um, you know, and, and you can get this in the grass pockets. You can skip it around stuff. Um, it's got enough bulk and profile to be a little craw or a bluegill. Um, it's gonna get you quality bites and it's gonna get you a lot of bites because it's not super intimidating. So um, this is real basic, no real surprise here. Um, and kind of the, the, that's one, one A and one B, I like to actually bump it up a little bit. So this I often uh, fish on an EWG style hook with a lightweight. Um, and then sometimes I wanna do like a finesse flipping thing um, and I'll put it on a little straight three out straight shank hook with a, a small like three eighths ounce uh, maybe up to a half ounce slipping weight and you can use a really light weight and get this into some really heavy cover because there's just not a lot of drag behind it so kind of a finesse flip or a finesse punch bait you can also put a bigger weight on it and really punch with it and, and it's a good bait because it has enough bulk the tails move enough water to get you those bites <clears throat> but you're not sacrificing with too big of a bait. So I really like that. And if you want to bulk it up, you can put a little punch skirt in front of it. So there's a lot of ways to rig this uh, on a Texas rig, depending on the situation you're in. Um, so all in all, it's a, it's a really good bait uh, from that standpoint. So when I'm fishing these light Texas rigs, uh, typically like this, this is typically like a, I don't know, 12, 15 pound type fluorocarbon situation. When I'm doing the kind of the bumped up flipping scenario, this is probably more of a 17 to 20 pound fluorocarbon. Um, if I'm actually like punching with a heavier weight, uh, you know, maybe 20, 25 pound, maybe even light braid, uh, you can punch this on a traditional setup. You can use a ringed VMC type style hookup. You can use a Tokyo rig, uh, a flip shot, all great options for this if you want to kind of punch and flip this. And you can kind of rig it in two different ways. Uh, most of the time I rig it kind of so it looks like a craw where I'm kind of rigging kind of parallel to these tails. Um, but you can flip it and rig it more uh, vertical in line and it'll just change this way it's going to glide a little more the other way it's going to swim and get down and kind of drop a little kind of more straight down uh, and the way i have rigged it it'll kind of tend to glide a little bit so depending on what you want to do uh how thick the cover is those are different ways you can change the rigging based on what you're doing to uh, to adapt to the cover so number two number two 
Uh, I like to fish it on a little uh, a shaky head, uh, often a football style shaky head, uh, and just kind of drag it. You could also use a small, uh, like a biffle style or a pivot head uh, and do the same thing. But it, so instead of like the traditional like biffle bug or like a, a big rage craw or something like that, it's going to throw a lot of water. This is a little more of finesse. You can get it in kind of scooting around. Uh, and this is great for all species of uh, fish when you're on any kind of light rock, gravel, scattered grass. You want to cover water, be finessey. This is a deadly way to catch a lot of fish. Um, this, this profile looks like a little cross right on the bottom. Uh, it moves enough water to get their attention, but uh, settle enough to get a ton of bites. Super deadly, especially if you're a pond angler. I've wrecked them on some ponds. If I could find a little hard spot out there, sit down there and drag this and just catch them cast after cast after cast. Number three. So the third way I like to rig them, uh, and actually the, the next couple ways are, are as trailers. So a lot of times on the first rig methods, as a shaky head or a Texas rig, you end up tearing the front of these baits up and then you kind of throw them off to the side but you can typically bite off that little chunk there and then they turn into the perfect jig trailer. So you can save these and get more fish out of them by just clipping off that, putting them in a little tote uh, or a little baggie and use them for the next jig trailer. There's a couple ways I like to fish them, both on <coughs> bladed jigs, like a chatterbait uh, or any of your favorite style bladed jigs, <clears throat> and then also on a regular traditional swim jig. So here's the white one. As you can see, I've got this one and most people rig them the other way. Um, anytime I'm trying to resemble a, a, a shad or a bluegill, or I want this bait to be kind of getting down in the water column, I'll rig it kind of the tail is parallel to the hook. And that does a couple things. One, it gives me a, a profile that looks more like a shad, right? That tail, that fork tail up there, or a bluegill, which I really like. Also, I'm doing something typically a little different than a lot of the other people out there fishing. Um, and I feel like I can actually get my bait to get down quicker because I'm not dragging uh, and it kind of kind of knifes through the water a little better. So here's a, a bladed jig rig the same way. So uh, with a bluegill colored one on kind of a, a dirty bluegill kind of, kind of color skirt. Um, but if I'm fishing super shallow with a bladed jig uh, or a swim jig, I will rig it the other way, right? So here's a, another, and I'll kind of go uh, perpendicular to the hook like this. So uh, then this, when it's going through the water, is going to tend to, as it falls, it'll glide a little more. It'll ride up just a little more. So if I'm fishing real shallow, if I'm trying to go over pads, if I'm riding over cover, I'll tend to rig it like this. Uh, or if I think I'm really kind of keying more on craw, uh, or fish that are feeding on crayfish, I'll rig it like this. So uh, think about what you're doing, the cover, the forage, how deep in the water column you want to be, uh, and you can adjust that menace scrub and it'll kind of like adjusting line size or weight uh, without actually retying. You can kind of just change the way you're rigging uh, this bait. Now I want to show you number four. Number four is a little sneaky. Uh, this is probably the way that I really fell in love with the menace scrub and learned to like it. And then a lot of these other rigging methods have kind of flourished from this one. So it's a simple, simple, the grub rigged on a, uh, a ball style head, or this is kind of a, an agitator, Bass Tech fin <clears throat> Finesse Tungsten uh, head. Most often I use 3 16 sometimes eighth ounce, since it's a little heavier. Um, but just rigging it like you would uh, a traditional grub on an open hook and throwing it out there and just reeling it in and slow rolling. This is super deadly for springtime smallmouth. Anytime they're pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn, post and they're kind of hanging on that shallow two to six foot cover, uh, either whether it's flats or boulder flats or shallow shoals or humps, um, you can cover a ton of water at this and it gets a ton of bites. And this is where I really like that KVD Magic uh, color. Um, so you just straight rig it on there. Uh, in this case, I do like to rig it uh, kind of the flat horizontal way because it's, it's kind of, we're fishing shallow. It's kind of a, a small bait fish. It's a grub. Um, and I want it to kind of glide. And then, you know, when you, if you do sea fish at the same time, you can just pitch this into boulders. You can pitch it next to cover. You can pitch it next to a dock. Uh, and a lot of times in the small they'll come out and grab it and just crush it. So that's a deadly way to cover a lot of water, a little different, uh, kind of a adaptation of the old Kalins or, or Mui grub. Uh, but this gets just flat out gets bit on spring smallmouth. Uh, as far as line size, uh, on this, when you're swimming for those finesse smallies uh, in the spring. I'm typically throwing a braid to fluoro type situation on a spinning rod. Uh, and in that situation, a lot of times I'm using anywhere from like a 12 to 15 pound braid tied to probably an eight to 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. Uh, I'll use probably like a five, six foot fluorocarbon leader. Uh, that way I can usually get a couple reties out of it before I have to retie the whole thing. 
um, <clears throat> and that's you know plenty of distance on that shallow water um, and that braid lets you really zing it out there on a really long cast and then one one grabs it on you just kind of pull into them and you get them almost every time with that exposed hook so uh, you can fish really light line be super stealthy and finesse and still cook almost every single fish that bites number five so the last way uh, that I've learned to really love these and it's been kind of a staple is is one of my main jig trailers um, Almost always when I'm throwing this as a flipping jig uh, uh, I want it to be able to skip well. I want it to pitch it in. I want it to kind of slide across the water I will fish it flat uh, This way uh, so it just it skips well it gets through the cover it glides as it gets in there um, And it's just a great compact trailer that moves enough water um, whether you're flipping your jig you're getting in a tight cover yeah. you're skipping uh, the action tails of this also let you to kind of swim that back to the boat and you'll get a lot of bites as you're swimming it or if you just want to parallel the dock or parallel a tree you can kind of mix it up and go back and forth between swimming the jig and just dragging it on the bottom so it's super deadly I would say my three main jig trailers right now are a spicy beaver a speed craw and the mana scrub and this probably gets the vast majority uh, of my jigs, I usually start out with this because it's it's durable, it holds up, it gets a ton of bites, um, and just overall, I can do a lot of things with this. It's very versatile. All right, now that I showed you my top five ways to rig the Menace Scrub, let me know if there's anything I'm missing. If you rig it in a way that's different than this and you catch a lot of bass, leave a comment, share it with me, share it with other people. Um, if you learn something new, uh, let me know. But hopefully these will either help you catch more fish on a bait you already love or introduce you a bait that's going to catch you a whole lot more fish. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, comment, like. Let me know what you want to see in future videos. And as always, hope you catch more bass and suck less.